Hello everyone, I want to start this video off by giving a huge thanks to everyone who was able to submit their tier list rankings so that this video could be possible. I seriously appreciate you guys. Now, I kind of want to head right into the video so that I don't take up too much of your time, but I will say that this video is based off of community vote rankings rather than the game meta, so keep that in mind as we get through this video. In 12th place, and very deserving of the spot, we have the Copper Shark. This shark is literal butt cheek. Like, <laughs> honestly, there is like almost nothing good about this shark. But you know what? We'll go through the pros and cons anyway so that we can actually discuss this shark in detail. Okay, pros. Cons. It is a relatively slow shark, you cannot grab divers while your ability is active, and its kindred shark, the bull, is honestly just a better shark to play. The only redeeming part about copper is basically the two or three skins that actually look pretty badass. The whole entire playstyle of this shark is basically to go in, grab a diver, pray to shit that you don't die while you're thrashing, then pop your mongo health ability in order to escape, Eat a seal, rinse and repeat. That's like literally all it is. Now this actually wouldn't seem like that bad of a method if it wasn't as good at it as literally any other shark in the game. One last thing about copper, if you are still trying to eat divers, do not pop your mongo health ability off because if you do, you will phase through all the divers while its duration is still active. And I believe this is one of the main reasons why copper is a sucky shark. Anyways, also, at the end of each shark, I will give you guys a list of recommended abilities, so feel free to screenshot. In 11th place, we have the Goblin Shark. Now, I gotta say, while there are some good players with the Goblin Shark, generally, this is a pretty shit shark. Pros. It is very good against newer players. And also, it has a surprisingly large amount of health. Cons. The duplicates are somewhat actually easy to see if you are any bit experienced at the game, and also, this shark has a pretty large hitbox. Now, the playstyle of this shark honestly mostly consists of your enemies just not being good. And the reason is because you need to utilize the duplicates, which is your main ability, for this shark. However, a lot of experienced players can look at these duplicates and immediately tell that they are duplicates. So when you're playing, you generally want to have to try and make yourself look like a bot, or just hope that the bots kind of look like you. Now, it is worth mentioning that when there are two players who decide to both go goblin, they can be an absolute menace. I mean, we've all seen the movie 300, where the 300 Spartans face the army of fucking goblin duplicates. This is Sparta! Anyways, anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent. Here are the list of upgrades that I highly recommend you get if you decide to play Goblin. In 10th place, we have the Lemon Shark. Pros. When the ability is active, this shark is actually pretty hard to see. And also, it has one of the fastest potential kill times out of any shark in the game. Cons. This shark does not have a lot of health. And also, for its size, it is pretty slow compared to most of the other sharks. The main playstyle of the lemon shark is basically a grab and go method where you go invisible, grab a diver, kill them, and then just lunge out of there. However, because of the nature of the ability, you do also have the option to do a lion wait kind of style, but that might not be entirely time efficient. Now, the last thing I want to mention about the Lemon Shark is that you definitely want to be upgrading your main ability, and the reason for this is not only does the ability help you become invisible, 
but it also increases your thrash damage on the first target you grab after using the ability. Not only that, but upgrading the ability also lowers its own cooldown, so this is definitely something you want to be gunning for. Anyways, here's the list of evolution upgrades that I would recommend if you decide to play Lemon. Now, in 9th place, and a very sad placement for me to see, we have the Big Eye Thresher. Pros. This is a very fast shark. Also, it's really good at chain killing and deals insane amounts of damage. Cons? Medkits. Also, open water, and it is just a little bit squishy. Okay, but for real, this is actually probably the most fun shark to play. Literally, the entire playstyle is basically you just going into the area, using your tail whip ability to smash divers against the wall, and then just leaving. And literally, you won't even have to grab them and risk taking, you know, knife damage. All you have to do is go in and smash them against walls and then exit. Even their so-called weakness, open water, can be completely countered by a nimble fin powerful tail combo, especially considering this shark has more thrash damage than a lot of people may actually think. Here's the list of upgrades if you decide to play this shark. In 8th place, we have the Noodle sh Blue Shark. The Blue Shark. Although, I swear it's a noodle, so you know what, I'm just gonna keep calling it the Noodle Shark. Pros. It is a very speedy shark, it is also hard to hit, and it has an ability that allows it to gain health after a kill. Cons. It has a low base health, and its ability is kind of replicatable by a shark simply just eating a seal. Now, the playstyle of this shark is you want to try and be as noodly as you can while doing a lot of hit and run. So you grab divers and then you get out of the place as quick as you can. And you want to keep repeating this process until you have enough kills that you can fully upgrade your blue ability and also get Vitalized Frenzy, because once you get those, you can essentially just go from one diver to the next, immediately regaining pretty much all of your health after each kill, and it would seem like nothing can take you down. Anyways, here's the list of evolutions that I highly recommend you grab if you decide to play this noodly boy, or as I like to call, this scrumptious spaghetti. In seventh place, we have the Oceanic White Tip. Pros, it is a very versatile shark. It has a lot of health-ish, and it can also deal a lot of damage-ish. Cons, it's an average shark. That's a <clears throat> that's pretty average. Now for the playstyle of this shark, you generally want to grab a diver while on defensive mode, then immediately swap to offensive mode to finish off your thrash damage, and then either move on to the next diver or escape. Because as I said before, this is a very versatile shark, so you can literally do whatever you want with it. Also, since this is a versatile shark, the upgrading system can be up to your discretion. However, I've learned that going down a speed route, like building for speed as you would a tiger or mako, would probably serve you best when playing this shark. In sixth place, we have the bull shark. Pros. This shark is a killing machine due to its basically temp everything ability. Also, it is quite resistant to bleed and toxic. Cons. Nets. Also the drag attachment. I've found that there are two general playstyles to play the bull shark. Let's call these the hungry boy method and the fast food method. So for the fast food method, you basically want to be going in, breaking through a wall, and if your ability is fully charged, that should be a one-tap. Grabbing a diver and leaving. Generally, by doing this method, you will only lose your temporary HP, and thus conserve your lives, but it may make time pretty tight. This brings me to my preferred method, the Hungry Boy method, where basically you just go in, kill a diver, and keep chain killing as much as you can until you die, and constantly using your temp HP in order to help you out. This way you save on time, but make up for it in lives. Now, here's the list of upgrades that I would highly recommend you use if you decide to play the Bull Shark. In 5th place, we have a shark so thick, we're talking triple C thick, and that is the Great White Shark. Bring that ass back like a boom 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 boom
I don't know where I was going with that. Pros. Won't fucking die. Also, it has a lot of damage and is insanely good at 1v1-ing. Cons. Nets, sometimes. Also, the tranquilizer upgrade. Also, it's a pretty big slow boy. Okay, now for the playstyle of the Great White Shark. I just gotta say, for the record, I do not like this shark, and here is why. If you are a good diver, and you're going up against a, even a mediocre Great White Shark, and your teammates are, let's just say, not as good as you, and you decide to, you know, go out in the open and 1v1 the Great White Shark, you will lose every single time, and it's all because of the Great White's ability which basically allows it to tank almost anything you throw at it, and you need multiple people to throw enough damage at one in order to kill it. Otherwise, it'll just grab you and kill you and then move on to the next one. Literally, like, the best aspect of the Great White Shark is just the Dunkelostia skin, and in some opinions, the Orca skin as well, which, you know what, I, I, I can take that, I can take that. But other than that, this shark is honestly kind of a crap shark. Not that it's a bad shark, it's just a crap shark, because there's not really much skill involved. So as I touched on earlier, the playstyle of the Great White Shark is exclusively the Hungry Boy method. You generally just want to be eating a diver, going to the next, going to the next, all the way up until you die, and that's pretty much about it. Anyways, here is the list of evolution upgrades if you happen to accidentally choose this shark. In fourth place, we have the Thresher. Pros, this shark is very fast. It's also good against divers who bunch up, and it is extremely capable of hit and runs unlike many other sharks. Cons. It is a squishy boy, and there are these uh, little things divers can buy called medkits. Now, while this shark is capable of either going Rambo or being played strategic, it is possibly better to be more strategic with this shark as that is its main purpose unlike most other sharks. Now, for this strategic playstyle, you generally want to go in, do hit and runs with your tail slap ability, and then get out of there without grabbing anyone, except for the small occasion in which there's a diver at low health and isn't being watched by its fellow divers. In those scenarios, you grab the diver and you kill them and still get out of there, and basically you just want to repeat this method over and over again. And honestly, you should preserve your lives pretty well. Now, I know a lot of people say Vitalize Frenzy is good for Thresher, and while it can be when you're trying to pub stomp a whole bunch of uh, weaker divers, it's not really all that good once you're playing against experienced divers, at which case you really want to be utilizing the hit and run method. Anyways, here's the list of evolution upgrades I recommend you grab if you decide to play Thresher. Okay, we have made it to the top three placements. Now, in third place, we have the Hammerhead Shark. Pros, it has the fastest potential kill upon grabbing divers than literally any other shark. It's also a really durable lad, and it's a surprisingly fast swimmer compared to a lot of the other bigger sharks. Cons, open water and net guns. Now, the playstyle of the Hammerhead Shark is basically the Hungry Boy method, but with a little bit of a twist. What you want to be doing is grabbing the divers, but trying to slam them into walls. So you want to be grabbing them, and then trying to grab them at an angle where you are going to be slamming them perpendicular to the wall in order to deal the most amount of damage. And when done successfully, you can kill these divers in like 0.2 seconds, I believe the record is. It's insanely fast. And as a true warrior of the Hungry Boy method, after this, instead of escaping, generally the best course of action is to immediately turn around, look at the next diver, and do the exact same thing. Because if you do this successfully, and good hammer players do this all the time, you will probably be getting triples or quads pretty easy with all the divers in there. Now, quickly before we move on to the next shark, I do want to talk about hammer counters. And this is because I know I mentioned earlier that open watering is a counter against hammer. However, a good hammer player, like an actual experienced hammer player, will literally just get powerful tail and nimble finned, and then either grab the open watering diver and then shoot upwards or downwards, wherever the nearest surface is, and will still kill them extremely fast. They might take more damage than if the diver was, you know, in a room, 
but they would still kill them with probably only taking maybe a fifth or a third of their health and damage from knife stab, so it they can still completely counter open watering. Anyways, here is the list of uh, evolution upgrades if you decide to play Hammerhead Shark. Now, before we get into our second place shark, I do have to say that the fight for first place was extremely brutal. In fact, it was so close that the one in second place had three times as many first place position votes cast on it. So it had a lot more people putting it in their top position than the one in first did. But nonetheless, in second place, we have the tiger shark. Pros. This shark deals high amounts of damage, it's a pretty fast shark, and it's hard to see with its ability. Cons. Uh, <laughs> stamina pool, maybe? Like, honestly, there isn't really much to put here. Now for the playstyle of this shark. Honestly, it's pretty much whatever you want. This shark could be used with the hungry boy method in which you just go from diver to diver, or it could be used as a grab and go method where you just grab the diver and then leave. Like, honestly, it is so versatile, and what I personally do is I grab doubles and then leave and heal, and then go back, grab doubles, leave and heal. That, that's generally what I try to do, but the tiger is literally so open-ended, you can choose your own playstyle for it. Now, very quickly, before we get to our first play shark, I do want to mention that the E ability should not be slept on. I've actually gotten a good few people come to me telling me that they don't think that the E ability is all that strong, but I'm going to tell you that with my lots of experience with the Tiger Shark, it can literally be the difference between you getting a triple and a quad versus you dying the second you enter the room because they know exactly where you're entering from. It is such a good ability to be used as soon as you're trying to start your attack. And honestly, I feel like people don't give it the credit it should be given. Anyways, I I'm gonna stop this ramble, but I do wanna say this is the list of evolution upgrades that I highly recommend you grab if you decide to play the Tiger Shark. Now for the shark you guys have all been waiting for, in first place we have the Spamzilla itself, the Mako Shark. Pros, it is a speed demon. It can also kill people extremely fast, and it's very hard to hit. Cons. It's a pretty squishy boy, not gonna lie. Now this shark has one method of attack. Spastic clicking. Now spastic clicking not only protects you when you're trying to lunge throughout the room in order to grab a diver, or if you have powerful tail while one's in your mouth, but it also quickly overwhelms the divers, and this is, <laughs> this is honestly super effective. Also, this shark's main ability, which allows it to get extra points whenever the marked target is killed, is a huge help, especially when you invest in this early game, so every single kill thereafter gets you an insane amount of points, and you can just end off the match with possibly half of the super expensive upgrades already grabbed. That, like this shark, it scales hard in the end game. Anyways, here is the list of evolution upgrades I would highly recommend you grab if you decide to play the Mako Shark. Now before ending the video, I do want to mention that while this tier list is constructed by the community opinions of the sharks and what they thought was strongest, I highly recommend checking out the channels of Vertroyer and Lionheart of Gaming in order to understand the meta of the game, and I'll also uh, link their channels in the description below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the tier list video. You guys are the best. Peace.